Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Crime Pays of Bonnie Doesn't Now, today I'm coming to you from a geologic formation known as the Texas Sanchi, which is basically, I don't know, roughly two million acres of land in South Texas composed primarily of sand blown inland uh, from an ancient sea. So uh, it uh, being that sand is rather, rather nutrient poor and fast draining, uh, you get what's called edaphic endemism. You get a uh, number of plants that are uh, adapted to grow specifically on these soils. They've evolved here and they do very well here and uh, a lot of other plants don't because again sand can be kind of a pain in the ass to grow on. So uh, anyway let's check out some of the cool natives we got. Okay here's the genus that's normally a pain in the ass. Got a lot of invasive members that uh, like to come up in uh, potted plants. This is a really cool one. Oxalis frutescens of the Oxalidaceae. All right look at that. Holy shit. Look at those, uh, look at those sepals right there. All right, little cupped sepals. You got triffid leaves with the hairs on them. Triffid leaves. Okay, instead of the, the uh, typical, uh, you know, clover looking leaf, they've normally got those uh, much broader leaves than that. All right, quite a few of them coming up here on the side of the road here in uh, beautiful Brooks County, Texas. Another genus that pops up in horticulture like a bad case of herpes. Lantana is the genus here. This is Lantana urticoides though. This is the native one, not the home despot one, not the one you buy in the big box stores. All right, urticoides, because it kind of looks like an urtica with those leaves. You can see they're very uh, covered in rich, rich hairs. Oh, who's that guy? A little leaf up or something? I'm not an entomologist. Don't listen to me. There's those, there's those uh, flowers. Verbenaceae is the family here. Big landing pad for the pollinators. And of course it smells good. It's got those those glandular hairs. Oh, they smell kind of pleasant. Opposite leaves too, since it is an order Lamiales. Oh, this is a nice one. Oh, nice nice whiff of diesel. I just got Pediomelum rhombifolium. One of the only red flowered members of the genus Pediomelum, with the aka the bread roots. Really cool genus in the pea family. Got tuberous roots, tuberous starchy roots. Look at those wing petals, bright red. Look at that banner petal. Got like, got like a mauve tangerine and those triffid leaves covered in all the hairs and what the shit. Just sprawling out here on the sand sheet. This guy, of course, convolvulus, convolvulus carii, right there. That red inner part of that perianth. Zoom in, look at the, uh, the floral parts. Look at those elongated stamens and that bifid style, that bifid stigma. See that? And then, of course, those leaves. Like so much of the stuff here on the sand sheet, covered in hairs, tomentose, all right, pubescent, woolly. It's got like a woolly texture to it, just sprawling out, just crawling out on the sand sheet. Looks like they actually mow here, which is kind of shit for brain, but uh, Texas loves to mow. Oh, uh, this is a this is a fucking epic species. Look at that, Monarda fruticulosa, and it's an endemic to the sand sheet. Okay, narrow distribution on this one. Lamiaceae, the mint family, as you could see, got those opposite leaves. Got verticillate inflorescences just whirled around that central axis. And, uh, you know, you can see the zy zygomorphic bilaterally symmetrical flowers. Look at that. Look at those stamens. Two stamens just drooping down out of that hood. Holy hell. And where's the style? You can see the style, too. And that one, that central one to the ants are crawling on. Adapted to the sand. Chalky, mint green foliage narrow minimizing surface area for, for how hot and brutal it gets out here and smells incredible too again mint family lamiaceae here we go coming up right next to the red beater right there which is an asteraceae we got a species of evening primrose formerly in the genus gora it's now in the genus onothra those flowers are just closing up as you can see they're just closing up they were open now last night well it's still kind of open you got those eight dangly stamens four petals and even weirder that little stick right there that just looks like the uh, pedestal for the flower is the uh, look at the that pollen on my finger that little st stick looking thing right there is the fruit that just looks like the old pedestal for the flower they've got that inferior ovary it's an elongated capsule which is so easy to mistake for just a simple pedestal but it's not look at that pollen just getting everywhere making a making a damn mess Look at all the spine scars on my finger. Jesus Christ, it's kind of gross. Pink petals, but you can barely see them. Really just getting it out there, all right? Probably adapting to, uh, to bee pollination here too. I don't know, that's interesting. I never looked into it before. Most evening primroses, of course, open at night. 
this one uh, is still open during the day. Most other evening primroses, at least the ones with the, the more broad petals, are closed up by now. Oh, here's a weird one right in the middle of Highway 281. All right, Euphorbiaceae is the family, same tribe as Manchineal, the, the most, what's been called the most toxic tree on earth. But this is just the same tribe. It's not obviously the same species or even genus. This is Stelingia sylvatica. Okay, but I do wonder if some of the same uh, phytochemistry is going on. Euphorbiaceae, the family, as indicated when you look at that fruit right there. See that three-lobed fruit? Three-carpeled ovary. And uh, those leaves, of course, whirled around the stem. Look at the uh, dentations on the margins right there. Kind of rubbery, all right? Euphorbiaceae. Of course, and then there's those inflorescences. Jesus Christ, what's going on there? Look at all those damn stamens. Look at it. Holy hell. And some glands. You got some nice glands on there, it looks like. Some nice juicy glands. Probably got quite a large uh, tuberous root down there. You can see all these stems. Probably the same individual all poking up from that same uh, storage root. Many species in a genus Stelingia, all right? All over the Southwest and Mexico. All right, same family over here, and also many species in this genus. This is Nidoscolus, Nidoscolus texanus. Malamu hair is just colloquially known, especially in Mexico where they can reach tree size. I've seen tree size ones of this in Oaxaca. The sting the shit out of you, you get uh, stung with too much at once. You gotta go get an epinephrine pen, which always gives me a nice opportunity to shit on how, how poor the American healthcare system is. And the fact that an epinephrine pen costs uh, hundreds of dollars, whereas in Mexico it's only five bucks, all right? Again, Americans don't really know how they're getting fucked. Look at that one over there. All right, this thing grow, goes on up into Austin. And uh, yeah, pretty common plant, all right? Important, edible too, if you boil those roots down. There's an edible species in this genus as well that doesn't have any uh, stinging, stinging hairs on it. And of course, we got Tetragonothica rapanda, as you can see right here. Really distinct with those four phyleries. See that? Before the flowers open right there. Laciniate leaves very glandular you can see the tiny hairs on his stem there's another species of tetragonotheca in texas Tetragon tetragonotheca texana but it don't get that tall all right this has a you know probably a very uh very very tuberous uh, perennial taproot and uh a big ass scape that it sends up you can see like a big that peduncle is for that the capitulum again which is just the flower the uh pseudo flower of the sunflower family you can see many tiny flowers composing what looks like a single flower Oh, this thing smells terrible like so many members of this, uh, not just this genus, but this family, dude. This is Polynesia. Looks like Polynesia erosa. You can see all the glands and the hairs on the stems, on those linear leaves, but those flowers really are showy as hell. Look at that. God damn, look at those two uh, posterior petals. All right. Also laciniate. Also lacy and what the shit kind of smells like a shitty, like a shitty pizza, like a shitty pepperoni pizza. You know, like something you, you know, microwave, you know, you get it like a liquor store, personal pan pizza that you microwave in there and, uh, you know, just, it, it does the job, but it doesn't taste that great. It's kind of smells like that. How do you, how do you make that, uh, that shitty uh, sausage pizza smell? Amazing. Apparently it works though. And, uh, you know, is a strong deterrent to herbivory. Okay. And before we move on down the road, got a nice patch of croton glandulosus. Croton, of course, has so many goddamn species in it. And, uh. This one doesn't get uh, much taller than that, but it has those beautiful silvery canescent leaves. This should be used a lot more in a commercial horticulture right here. I don't know why it's not. You can see where it's growing. doesn't get watered here. does fine on this uh, nutrient-poor sand. There's the inflorescences right there. All right, like most crotons, it's uh, monoecious, so uh, separate male and female flowers. You can see the male flowers with, uh, looks like 10 stamens poking out, and then there's the ovary right there, which was the female flower look at all the scales on it holy hell you can see why they call it glandulosis glandular scale like trichomes all right does a very good job of reflecting light and uh preventing moisture loss through those leaves and this fancy bastard from a wonderful genus in the pea family as you can see from those odd pinnate leaves right there this is tephrosia tephrosia linheimeri tephrosia is a big genus this one is uh, endemic to the sand sheet too bad it's not flowering showy as hell flowers red banner wings and keel papillonaceous flowers red pea flowers when it's going off and again that mint green color reflecting light preventing moisture loss keeping leaf temperatures down you could tell this is coming from a hot and exposed environment thank god it's cloudy today because i'd be roasting out here normally it gets upwards of 105 for six straight months easily 
Oh, this is kind of odd to see this here. You can see it's there, at least they're not mowing over it. Prunus Texana, one of the rarest plums in North America, all right? Plums, almonds, cherries, all the genus Prunus. Okay, but this one, unfortunately, it's not in flower or fruit. We'll see if we can find one later. But uh, you can see those, again, those leaves, so pubescent, covered in the hairs, abaxial side and adaxial side on the top. So lower and upper. And you got those zigzag stems. They can get upwards of, I don't know, five feet tall, but rarely more than that. And that's going to be an old growth one. So very cool. And then, of course, it gets a little almond looking fruit when it's mature, which I guess is technically edible, not very palatable. But look at those, look at that branching though. Holy shit. This thing needs to be grown more, right? It tolerates the heat so well. You saw how hairy those leaves were. So here in Texas, being at 95% of the land is private property, we do a lot of our botanizing uh, just lurking on the side of the road, okay? And uh, that's what we're going to be doing here. Unfortunately, since I don't know anybody that's got a large tract of land on the sand sheet with a lot of plant biodiversity in it. But that's fine. You know, who, who cares? You got plenty of room. You just, just uh, you know, do the whole lurking thing. Anyway, right here we'll start off with the banger, the number one plant from this region. This is Abronia amelie. You can see it right there. Abronia is a really cool genus. You got quite a few uh, rare species in it. Uh, especially in the southwest. There's also a very rare species in Yellowstone that uh, should be federally endangered. I think it's only got four or five populations, most of them small, left. Anyway, Abronia Amelia, you can see how sticky this is. I actually did a podcast with a guy who studies sticky plants, uh, Eric Lopresti, and uh, we talk about this species especially. He's grown plenty of them from seed. Short-lived perennial, uh, but just look at, look at how sticky that is. You end up getting bugs stuck on those things all the time. Look at all those glandular hairs, just like cannabis has glandular trichomes. Anyway, uh, you can see the inflorescence uh, is composed of a bunch of tiny flowers. Each one of those little tubes uh, that come together at the uh, base right there. It's basically an umbel with uh, subtended by those five five bricks. Look at that. Even the tube, the, t the tubes of those flowers have uh, trichomes on them. This is pollinated primarily by butterflies. You can see uh, butterflies have a, a long a long proboscis and uh, this has a long floral tube. So pretty interesting. You can see the, all the stamens included inside each one of those trumpet shaped flowers. And uh, it's got, the, they mature from the outside and you can see the inside of those flowers still have some maturing to do and they're not open yet. And look at what the fruits look like, all right? That's a compound fruit. Those are what's called anthocarps. See that? Look at those, those individual fruits, all right? They'll fall, they'll turn brown and dehiss. They'll fall off when they're fully mature. They're not mature. You can see the old flowers still attached to those fruits, to those ovaries. And, uh, you know, supposedly they need an ethylene treatment to germinate. That's what I've heard. There's uh, actually some sort of ethylene, uh, yeah, I guess you could buy commercially, uh, for Bradford pears, terrible plants that they are. That's what it's often used for. And uh, you mix it with water and you give it a little soak. And supposedly that increases it uh, germination. All right. Also, you know, probably time. Just sowing a bunch of seeds and waiting will, we'll, you know, you'll get a bunch of germinating that way, but not all at the same time. You get uniform germination with that ethylene treatment, or so I've heard. And of course, there's those inflorescences, those umbels before they open. You can see those flowers are not mature yet on this guy right here. Still subtended by all those bracts, those protective sticky bracts. Right here we got Sphorelsia lindheimeri, another sand sheet endemic, all right? Broad leaves, really cool Sphorelsia right here. Too bad it's not that none of the flowers are open, but you'll see this all the way on up into San Antonio if you're coming from the border. Okay, grows on these uh, on these sandy soils right here. Look at those calices. Look at those, those green sepals before they unfurl, and then there's that really a showy flower right there. Not open yet. Thank God it's not, too, because, you know, if it, would, if it was open, that would mean it was hot as hell out, which it uh, often is down here. And uh, it's going to rain, so it's, uh, you know, a little bit easier for filming. Now, see, just for posterity, there's that, that flower. is for L.C. Lindheimer. I look at the ants going nuts on it. Look at all the stellate trichomes and with the shit. And uh, yeah, if it was hotter, it'd be more. But uh, nice piece of garbage right there. Look at that. All right, here's an odd and obscure one. Tetranurus linearifolia variety Aranicola. Aranicola meaning, you know, it grows on the sand. All right, little daisy Wooly as hell, again, adaptation to the harsh exposure and the fast draining nutrient poor soil of the sand. Look at how wooly that is, all right? Almost mistaken, almost mistook me for one of those uh, those uh, wooly areophyllum you get out in California. Those other, uh, another genus in the uh, daisy family, Asteraceae. 
Look at those uh, filaries again. Look at how, look at look at that dense pubescence. Look at how they're so woolly, so tomentose. All right, preventing uh, evapotranspiration of moisture from those stomates. So it looks like something came through and gnawed the flowers off. That's too bad. Anyway, pretty cool plant right there, and uh, narrow endemic too. Only known from South Texas. See, there's a nice there's a nice specimen of that tetranurus. Again, you can see how woolly it is. Look at this guy, Campanulaceae the family here, bellflower family, lobelia family, Triodanus perfoliata. And you can see why it's got uh, that species epithet, it's got perfoliate leaves. Well, they're kind of, they're clasping their sessile. Look, those flowers just pop right out of the leaf axles. There's an old one right there. Curl has already fallen off. And just in case you wouldn't be able to tell it's in Campanulaceae, the big giveaway is that Triffid stigma. See that you got three lobes, three white lobes on that triffid stigma, five purple petals, uh, and uh, I mean that's that stigma really gives it away. So anyway, Asterales is the order there, same order as sunflowers, Campanulaceae again, Triodanus perfoliata, not endemic to Texas, quite common there at the central United States. Look at this mint zilia nuda, not going off yet. All right, Velcro leaf, Velcro leaf family, Loisaceae. All right, North and South America with a few outliers. I think there's like two two genera, two or three genera that you get outside of the Americas. But other than that, the whole family is primarily uh, in the Americas, all right? Uh, in the quote-unquote new world. Look at those uh, undulate margins to those leaves. Another beast, herbaceous perennial, so that the veg part dies back up top, the root stays alive and just goes dormant during the drought season. And uh, they could just take the, uh, the brutal heat. Again, just tons of tiny hairs on those leaves. You can see what they call it, the Velcro leaf family. Look at, look at the leaves on a... Uh, Look at the hairs on those leaves and stems. Holy shit. Wild. You could take one of these leaves, it'll stick right to your shirt, your clothing. Even more of a pain in the ass if they're dry. Formerly in a genus Heliotropium, this is now in the genus Euploca. This is Euploca racemosum. Look at those white radar disc flowers. Five petals all fused together. Look at how hairy those freaking leaves are. Look at that. Look at that. A thick coat of strigos hairs. You can see how they're just kind of appressed. To the leaf they just lay flat against the leaf they don't stick out and there's that uh, inflorescence you can see the new flowers emerging you can see the calyxes this the calyxes the sepals are covered in hairs too and then there's that uh, tube so i wonder what the most uh, primary pollinator of this is you can see that tiny little hole right there in the center who's going to hit this moths some uh, lepidopteran of some kind what's going on and a member of the ubiquitous monocot family, especially in the uh, the Neotropics, Comalinaceae. This is Comalina erecta. Right? You also get the genus Tretoscanthi, which is also in this uh, in his family. Anyway, dimorphic anthers right there. You can see two different kinds of anthers, two petals. Everything subtended by a bract, and you got a style right there in the middle. This camera kind of sucks uh, in low light, but you hopefully you can see what's going on. So those two elongated uh, stamens have pollen producing anthers on it and maybe those other ones in uh that are posterior and above everything are just feeder anthers all right just conjecture could be all right this uh, luring in pollen hungry bees and here of course is that prunus texan you can see how small that fruit is this one's kind of rotten there's quite a few in there oh look it's covered in lichen too all right really cool plant really special very important ecologically Probably once so uh, was more abundant, but due to agriculture and land clearance, it's much reduced. And uh, see, there's another, there's another fruit. So probably edible, but probably doesn't taste very good. Don't quote me on that though. I don't know the ethnobotany. I don't want to knock it too much. Anyway, there we go. Prunus texana. Look at this. Here we go. Species in the buckthorn family, Ramnaceae, same genus as Ceanothus. This is Colubrina. Colubrina texensis. Look at that. Look at those fruits readying. Okay, there's the old flower still. Through, still got a flower on it. You can see those five stamens that are uh, kind of poking out in between that pentagonal flower. Those are the uh, reflex petals, so they're alternate petalous. And uh, there's those sessile leaves. All right, hog plum is the common name for this. Almost looks like that uh, prunus I was showing you with that zigzag branching style, but uh, of course, different family right here. There's more of those those flowers. All right, important ecologically. All right, bird dispersal and uh, and nectar for the pollinators. Okay, back on the side of the road, further down the road, we got a member of the mustard family, Brassicaceae. This is in the genus Paysonia. Got those four-petaled flowers. You got those fruits already maturing. Looking like a little bubble, a little bean with that style and stigma still attached to it. 
all right petals have fallen off on those uh, fruits right there and you got those uh, somewhat lancy lit deeply uh, divided at the base leaves see that and of course you got the hairs and everything you got those uh, like little scales okay also got a facelia patula flora down here all right, they can get a, they can get a little bit bigger than this, but this is a good idea of what their flowers look like. Facia, of course, Boraginaceae. Look at the white inside of those flowers, as well as those uh, stamens with a little yellow anther on them. A little brown now. Nice croton right there. And this guy over here is a really special plant. This is great. Senecio ridelii. Doesn't look like much now, but in three months, it'll be blooming. It'll be about, I don't know, twice as tall and just lit up with yellow flowers and pollinators. All kinds of cool moths and butterflies and what the shit just hanging out and you can see last year's inflorescences right there. Back on the sand, just further down the road. Look at this one, here's a nice one, Delia abovada. Look at how fuzzy those damn leaves are, all right? Odd pinnate leaves, all right? As you would expect from a member of the pea family. And then there's those spikes of flowers, all right? Like Delia's tend to have. Look at that. How many flowers in that cone-shaped inflorescence? See, the ants are enjoying it. And look how, just again, look how woolly, look how woolly those leaves are, Jesus Christ. This thing is just built for full exposure to the sun. It's just evolved for full exposure to the sun. Again, plants from dry climates often have a lot of hairs. Look at those flowers too, again. All right, little pea flowers, all right, each subtended by one of those elongated bracts Fuse into a little cone. And we got another creeping pea, Indigofera miniata. There's those pea flowers. A variation on a pea flower. Look at those wing petals, see that? See how they just kind of splay out like that? You got that big red banner in the back. Ooh, you got the dew on everything nice. And that keel, of course, is hidden beneath those uh, those wings. But that the pinnate foliage, again, odd pinnate. All right, coming out of a perennial rhizome that's somewhere in there. Look at this, look at these woolly, silvery leaves. Helianthus argophyllus. Looking at this plant, you'd have no idea that it can reach upwards of 20 feet tall in a single season. It's an annual, so it only lives for one year and then dies, but these are massively important plants. And again, endemic to sand. You also get them along the coast, but they get extremely tall here, especially if it's a good rain year. I mean, literally, you'll get them upwards of 20 feet tall. All right, very fast growing plants for an annual. They need the full sun. God only knows what terrifying things have happened at their rest stop. Anyway, you can see the Helianthus argophyllus, silver leaf sunflower everywhere. And we got a really cool carrot that grows on sandy soils, Uritania texensis, texana, excuse me. That ends in a vowel. If the genus name ends in a vowel, the species name ends in a vowel. Anyway, a sand loving carrot. Remember the carrot family, APAC. All right. But APAC can also have a lot of toxic secondary chemistry. And remember, uh, poison hemlock. Uh, the colloquial name hemlock, not a true hemlock, uh, was in that family too. That's what killed Socrates. Anyway, you see this thing is thriving here on the sand. There's the fruits, the schizocarps. They're mature. There's little flaky uh, things you can see. Still see the uh, the, the bifid styles, the two styles uh, on that uh, two carpeled ovary. See the style that receives a pound on top of that ovary. And then there's the uh, actual flowers, a compound umbel, and then those those white flowers. Are tiny. You can see the five white petals on each one. You got a stylopodium uh, on each of those flowers, which uh, secretes the nectar thing. It's a st stylopodium. It's a top the ovary. Nice. You got little bracts beneath that compound umbel too. Interesting one. It's doing very well here. There's quite a few of them. Who's this guy? What's he doing? Look at it. There's a little guy in there. Little beetle inside this passive flora feeder. The defeated passion flower. Oh, that's nice. That's what you call an androgynophore. Five stamens, all right? Those little pads look like brake pads. All right, pointing inwards, and you got that uh, three-lobed stigma up top. Three-lobed style, excuse me. Three separate styles. The ovary just beneath it, the ovary between the uh, the structure that holds the stamens and uh, the uh, the styles. All right, that's what you call an androgynophore. Specific. The passive flora. Well, there's a couple other genera of plants that use it as well. But it's just a structure when you got the stamens and the stigma all fused to the same thing. And look at those bracts. Look at those subtending bracts. See that? 
so glandular and sticky. Just look at those. Look at that. Oh yeah. See the glands? Got a lot of hairs on those leaves too. All right. So many species in this genus, passion, Passiflora, the passion flowers. You can see this thing doesn't get too long, just kind of trails along the ground, but that flower really is a banger. Like every species in the genus Passiflora, all the passion flowers tend to have banger flowers like that. <laughs> oh. oh God, and those, yeah, those, the, the glandular residue on those bracts does indeed smell like hell. I mean, I kind of like it, but it smells like phytochemical hell, you know what I mean? When plants are trying to make that burnt rubber smell. Well, as you can see, it started raining, now started pissing on me. Much appreciated. It's not raining as hard as I'd like it to see. Look, there's trash everywhere. Look at this plastic bag. They love plastic bags in Texas. Do you need a bag? You go into the store, you get two things, they'll put it in a bag. Anyway, it's raining. This whole region should be lit up in a week or two, so we should have a good bloom. All right, all that lupinous subcarnosis, other stuff should be up. Look at this creeping bastard right here. I love this. Stemodia lanata. Okay, we also get a species in the genus Stemodia. A little bit further west here, Stemodia shoddy eye. It's a little bit more rare. This grows all the way uh, over to uh, Padre Island as well. This one, Stemodia lanata. Lanata because it's woolly, all right? Like uh, lanolin, you know? It's, uh, what is it, Greek or Latin for uh, wool or sheep or some shit? I don't know who gives a fuck. Anyway, uh, you can see what it's doing here. Just almost white leaves, chalky mint green color, reducing sun exposure, keeping the moisture in, adapted to the sand. And it's making this wonderful ground cover here, all right? You got to be a real dummy not to be using this in a native plant garden here. Why do I always got to be like that? Why does it have to be mean? I don't have to be mean. You have to just be a little... Uh, a little maybe you just forgot or something you know i don't know why we always got an insult all right i think it's just that it's that more that yankee shit you know it's just it's the chicago the chicago one in me all right it really is a mean place <laughs> anyway tiny purple flowers plantagenesis the family opposite leaves banger of a plant right there anyway that's all i got for you today have a good rest of your afternoon evening whatever the shit it is go fuck yourself bye you need a bag you need a bag you might need a bag get 10 items at the store you need 10 separate bags